Hurricane Clap starting to see if they can convince Salcinas to throw a wicked strike and have David Lee miss it. He looks to first base and the pitch. Swung on and missed. David Lee strikes out swinging and Salcinas gets a second out of the inning, and keeping that, the men on the corners. And that Eagles in their white uniforms, blue numbers and blue helmets. Here comes the full count. And swing and a miss, strike three. Another strikeout for Stephen Ewing. And that ends the inning. Three nothing Hurricanes. Keep it locked to the voice. Swing and a miss, strike three. Finally gets on the outside corner. And that's a strikeout for Najalkovic. Number two in the inning and number nine on the night for the Hurricanes. Well, that's a, you might see an inside pitch come up here. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom the eighth inning. Hurricanes up with a three. Three nothing lead. That's outside. There strike it is. three and a third strikeout of the inning for Najalkovic. All right. And that gets the Hurricanes to the ninth inning with the same score intact. Full count here, two outs, bottom of the seventh. Illinois State 4, Miami 3. The pitch belted over second base. And here comes Chance Mack home. He is safe in the throw to third. No, it goes past him. Dale Carey comes in. He is out. But the Hurricanes, I believe, tie it up with that run in by Chance Mack. It is 4-4, four to four, Illinois State, Miami. Keep it locked here at 90.5 WVUM, The Voice. One, two pitch to hopefully end the inning here. Hurricanes faithful, give a little applause. Strike three, second of the inning by Robinson. Thurberts do have a lot of stolen bases. 2-1 pitch, and he's running. Strike two, and they got him at second. Great throw by Roland to Michael Broad for the to catch Henshaw stealing. It's a deep fly ball to left field. It's, it's going. going. Gone home Out run. of here. Roddy Rodriguez wins the baseball game for the Hurricanes. Five to four in the bottom of the 11th inning. Wow, he killed that ball, Rodriguez. That's a new best. They get the bottom here down by the foul pole as he comes back home to his entire team. Wow, amazing. what a great end to this game and a great finish for Ronnie Rodriguez. And welcome back to Alex Rodriguez Park. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. The Hurricanes looking to complete their sweep against the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. And we have a pinch hitter. It's Julian Santos. And the clap Stepping is starting. Stepping in for Alex San Juan. San Juan's day is done. He went one for three and two strikeouts and a base hit. And now it'll be Julian Santos looking to lead things off here in the bottom of the ninth. The first pitch thrown in for a strike by Bethune-Cookman. As they look to walk away with at least one win in this series. Well, only one win if they can get this one. And Santos grounds out to second baseman. Bizarro throws it to Taylor for the easy first out of the inning. And before I can even give Julian Santos stats, he's out. But now it'll be the top of the order for Miami. Trailing by one run down to their last two outs here. In the bottom of the ninth inning against Bethune-Cookman, thought Miami could potentially get the sweep. I mean, they still can, but Bethune-Cookman, give credit to Bethune-Cookman. They're giving Miami everything they've got. Bethune-Cookman with their base running has done a lot. Here comes the first pitch, and it's hit to shallow left field by Stephen Perez, and he'll get on base, a blooper just over the outstretched arms of Rashad Johnson, and that'll be the first hit of this inning for the Hurricanes. A nice hit there. Trailing back was Prashad Johnson, and it just bounced right over his head. And he dove backwards, couldn't get it. A very, very nice hit by Stephen Perez. That's exactly what the Canes need here in the bottom of the ninth. And up next, we have Dale Carey, number 36 for your Miami Hurricanes. Looking to do some damage and move Perez around the bases. Although he's 0 for 3 in the day. Confident he can at least get something going here. And Stephen Morris has a real decision to make here. Does he tell Stephen Perez to steal? Perez is 14 for 18, excuse me, 15 for 19 after his steal today. He's already stolen once successfully. 
And the Hurricanes have struggled a little bit. I mean, they've got five hits now, but they didn't have a single hit until the fifth inning. So do you risk it and tell Steven Perez to go? It'll be a real interesting decision by Jim Morris. And the first pitch from Garner is low in ball one. And as we were talking, as we were talking, they had, had a pickoff throw, and Perez would have to dive back. So he has a pretty decent lead. Uh, it'll be an interesting decision because obviously if he gets caught... It would be a gamble, absolutely, yeah. if you tell Steven Perez to steal because if he gets caught, then you have no runner on and two outs. But if he goes and you have a runner in scoring position, it changes the entire game. And the pickoff throw out. again, he dives back. Perez does. Because if he gets him to second, and even if Dale Carey swings away and he's out, then it could even potentially move Perez to third. Or do you keep him at first and just keep the safe base runner on? It's a big gamble for the Hurricanes. We'll see if they do it. Garner with the second pitch. Carey pops it up. And thankfully it will go foul into the seats just in front of us. As uh, otherwise that ball would have been easily caught by one of the players on Bethune Cookman. And it doesn't appear that Steven Perez is going to steal. All indications say he's not. Hasn't had any jumps or anything like that. But you just never know. You'd like just ca Dale to just get a nice hit so we don't have to worry about this at all. Dale Carey is over 3 today, though. 269 hitter on the year, 16 RBI. And a pickoff, though, to first. A little tricky play by Garner as he wasn't exactly set, but gets Perez, and Perez gets back just in time. So one ball, one strike, one out right now. Dale Carey at the plate, Perez at first base. 3-2, Bethune-Cookman here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And the pitch, and Perez is going, it's a chopper, and it's over, left um, third baseman Nick Johnson, Perez goes in a 30, slide safe, Perez gets all the way around the bases, Perez to third base, Del Carey still at first, looking to get to second, but he'll stay at first, a great play by the base runner, Steven Perez. Boy, right you there. want to talk about gamble, first Steven Perez decides that he's going to steal before Dale Carey makes the contact on the play, and then... He decides to gamble and go for third. The play to third could have been in time. It was really down to the wire there. He slid feet first into third base. Nick Johnson couldn't make the tag. And the gamble pays off because Steven Perez is on third. Dale Carey's on first. There's one out, and the Canes trail by one here in the bottom of the ninth. And the fans are really getting behind their Hurricanes here. Chance Mack will be up next, but we'll have a pitching change. So keep it locked to the voice. An exciting time here in Hurricanes baseball. Come on back. Welcome back to an energetic Alex Rodriguez Park. You have Steven Perez who just ran around the bases on a big gamble, stealing and then getting to third base as Del Carey hit a high chopper over Nick Johnson's head. So you have a man on first, Del Carey. You have a man on third, Steven Perez. And you have Chance Mack at the plate. Andrew, what's going to happen? And we thought there was going to be a pitching change for Bethune-Cookman, but it was just a, a prolongated meeting on the mound that Jeff Cox, home plate umpire, had to break up, and now you got Chance Mack at the dish. He's one for two. And as we're ta as we were talking there, Garner um, kind of faked a throw to third just to keep Perez honest, and Del Carey at first base. Chance Mack at the plate, one out, bottom of the third inning, 3-2 is Bethune-Cookman's lead over the Hurricanes, but they have the winning run on first base. Runners at the corner for Miami. Chance Mack has 24 RBI on the season, trying to extend that total here, and if he can do that, Miami could potentially go for the sweep, perhaps in walk-off fashion. He doesn't have any home runs on the season. But this is still a golden opportunity for Miami, trailing 3-2 to two in the bottom of the ninth with one out. Garner throws his first pitch, low and away, ball one. He stepped off the mound twice. We were giving you some other analysis, and his first pitch is low and away. And the crowd really into the into now as they are again behind their Hurricanes, those who came to brave the heat today. So one ball, no strikes, one out. Man on first and third for the Hurricanes, Chance Mack at bat. Here comes the pitch. High and away. Two balls. They'll strike. One out. And good job by Max. Staying patient in this at bat, although there's a lot on the line. The game is on the line, yeah. essentially, in this at bat. But he's showing great patience and poise out there, getting ahead of the count 2-0. Oh. Runners on the corners for the Hurricanes. 
Here comes the pitch. Mack lets that one go by. That's a third ball and as many pitches. And Fernandez for Garner. is on deck for Miami. Of course, he pinch ran for Brad Feger. So Feger not in this lineup anymore, but Jim Morris staying with Fernandez. It looks like he's not going to make this change and going to let Fernandez swing if he can get his at bat here. 3 0 count, though, to Mack. And it's a ball for the bases are loaded. Four. Alexander Fernandez. Now, what do you, you'd rather just get a, a, a sack fly here and get the tying run, or are you going to be aggressive and go for it? Well, I think that you're going to have to try and just get the run because Alex Fernandez has yet to record a hit on the season. He's only played in five games. He's had six at bats, no hits, no runs, no walks, no nothing. A big goose egg across the board for Fernandez as he's, you know, seen limited time here. This is a big spot for Miami. And you got to give credit to Steven, uh, excuse me, Jim Morris, who's showing confidence in the young man and Alexander Fernandez. Bases loaded situation. Miami could get the win right here. Yeah, we do have a pitching change for Bethune Cookman, so we're going to take a real quick break, but make sure you come right back. Hurricanes have the bases loaded with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning. And welcome back to Alice Rodriguez Park. We do have a pitching change for Bethune Cookman. Andrew, give us the stats on our new Fisher. Jordan Daly is on the bump in a critical spot here for Bethune Cookman. He's got a 3.96 ERA. He's 4 and 6 in the win loss department on the season. He's made 26 appearances, 36 and a third innings of work. He's given up 16 earned runs. He's a strikeout machine, though. He's got 24 strikeouts to only eight walks. So that's what the Hurricanes will have to deal with as they just, they just cheering her in the back background was one of the two walk-off home runs that were hit this year. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, that one was by Peter O'Brien, the injured catcher who's uh, not in the lineup today. But you do have three men on base for the Hurricanes, which is something, uh, something uh, to be said for here. As uh, Alexander Fernandez will be hitting, you have Dale Carey on second base, you have Steven Perez on first base, and Chance Mack on first. With one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning, and 3-2 so the score. Fernandez up at the plate, and you know he'd love to get his first hit of the season and perhaps walk off fashion because if he could get a base hit here, he could potentially score two runs. Again, has no hits on the season. He's only appeared in five games and six at-bats, and none more critical than this one right here in the bottom of the ninth. And if you can't do that, you just want him to get the ball in the air to give uh, Perez a chance across home play. Here comes the first pitch. And that'll be a ball a little high from Jordan Daly. Number 20 for the Wildcats. The fans getting excited, as are we here in the WVUM broadcast booth. For those of you just joining us, it's the bottom of the ninth. The Canes trail 3-2. to two. One out, but the bases are loaded. Alex Fernandez. The 1-0 pitch is inside. That's a second ball. Being very patient is Fernandez, which is good. You can push uh, Daly. To the limit. And all of these pit, all of these hitters today for Miami, you gotta give credit. They've all been patient in almost every single at bat. And none more important than this one. The two balls, no strike, one out. Here comes the pitch. And that's a ball. Thought maybe for a second there, I Jeff thought Carr it was a strike. Would call that a strike, but it's a ball, and just like that. Fernandez is ahead of the count 3-0 and if there's one more ball pitch then a run, a tying run will score. And that will take a lot of pressure off of the young man Fernandez and the rest of the Hurricanes but Fernandez I'm sure love any way just to get another run across the plate. Here comes the pitch and it's called a strike a little inside but still over the plate so now 3-1 and, one, and, and good, Fernandez has to be smart here. Good decision by Fernandez there ahead of the count 3-0 to just take a pitch Hopefully, maybe it'd be called a ball, but now he's going to get a nice pitch to hit here. Let's see what he's got. Jordan Daly with the pitch. Outside, ball four! And the tying run, Steven Perez will cross the plate. And up to bat now for the Hurricanes, the designated hitter, Michael Broad. So if they can do some damage. So at the very least, we'll go into extras, but there's one out. With the bases loaded, so Michael brought his 0 for 2 on the day, but this crowd is absolutely electric. The Hurricanes have fought and clawed their way back in this one. It's a 3-3 ball game. A nice at-bat by Alex Fernandez to get walked, 
which ended up scoring the tying run because of the bases loaded situation. The infield is all in right now as they have to make a play at any base, anything out of the infield is essentially the game winning hit. And although we love extra baseball, we'd love to end it right here in the bottom of the ninth with you guys listening on WVUM.org and 90.5 FM. Here comes the pitch to Michael Broad inside the plate. That's a strike one. Jordan Daly looking to, to save his team a little bit, at least get him the extra innings. The Hurricanes looking for the sweep. And because, the because there's one out, Ryan, you mentioned it. Michael Broad doesn't necessarily have to get a hit. He just has to make good enough contact so yep. that Dale Carey can tag up from third and score the winning run. It's a tie, tie, it's a tie ball game, 3-3 here in the bottom of the ninth. Daly with the pitch. Broad with the swing, and it's a fly ball. It's the... Shallow center field, and Carey's going to go for the plate. Here's the play, the plate, and Carey is safe. Carey slides in safe on the sack fly by Michael Broad, and the Hurricanes walk off this game and win. Four to three in the bottom of the ninth inning. What oh a great my running God. play by Dale Carey. And that ball wasn't hit that deep. It was hit to shallow center field. But Dale Carey made the decision that he was going to tag up and run and really test the arm of Brandon Turner and give credit to Dale Carey. That was some heads up base running there, sliding into home for the game winning run, the series sweeping run. And Miami wins all three games against Bethune Cookman in dramatic fashion. Yeah, the Hurricanes, when they look down at the beginning of the game, they claw their way back, scoring two runs in the bottom of the ninth inning, one on a walk and the other one on a, on what you just heard, the walk-off play, the, de the shallow fly ball that Derrick Carey ran out at the plate to have a sliding play at the plate. He, make sure you come back for the business school post-game show. We'll have an interview with the player and keep it locked to the voice. Hurricanes win 4-3. to three.